In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the Simple Moving Average, or SMA, and learn how to use the indicator to find potential trend reversals. This may be one of the simplest indicators to go through, but we'll be sure to discuss all of the basics to make sure you guys have a good foundation to work from. We'll be discussing how the study is actually calculated, some practical examples of how you guys can use it to find both buy and sell signals, and towards the end, we'll also discuss how you guys can create a custom scan to find stocks that have had a recent SMA crossover. To begin with, let's first discuss how the SMA is calculated. Now, luckily for us, the simple moving average may be one of the simplest indicators to calculate. You simply need to add together all of the recent prices, then divide by the total number of time periods that we're measuring. So the formula would look something like this. It's going to look like the SMA equals the closing value of the first day, plus the closing value of the second day, third day, and so on. You would then take that value and divide it by the total number of periods that we're measuring. So using a very simple example, let's say we were looking at ABC stock and wanted to find the five day simple moving average. Looking at the chart here, we can see that over the past five days, the stock has closed at $10, $10.50, $9.47, $10.15, and $10.85. If we were then to add all of those closing values for the past five days, add them all together, then divide by the number of five, we would then come to our five day simple moving average. That would come out to a total value of $10.19. So hopefully you guys can see that the simple moving average is simply the average price of the stock over the time period that you're measuring. So now that we have a good understanding of how the indicator is actually calculated, let's next go over how we would add it to our charts within Thinkorswim. Like all other indicators within Thinkorswim, to add them, we simply need to come over here to the studies icon in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and select that. From there, we can then see the studies menu where we can see all of the studies available to us over here on the left hand side. Now, scrolling through this list here, you can see there are quite a few studies available to us. So what we're gonna do is come up here to the search box and go ahead and type in the word simple for simple moving average. Looking down below in the list there, you can see it's the second one from the top. So we'll go ahead and select that and then look in the lower left hand corner and hit add selected. From there, you can then see that the simple moving average gets added over here to the right hand side and it overlays the price graph. So it's gonna be on top of our chart. Now, before we actually hit OK and save this, what I'm actually going to do is come over here to the settings menu over here on the right hand side and go ahead and click on that. Now, this settings menu is where we're going to change either the inputs to actually change how we're going to calculate the line itself or change the overall appearance settings for it. In my case, what I'm going to do for today's example is actually change the length right here from the nine period moving average to the 50 period moving average. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm also gonna come down here to the overall appearance settings and I'm actually gonna leave the color of the line as this tealish color, but I'm gonna make the width a little bit wider and change it to a length of three. So now that I'm happy with all of the changes for both the inputs and the actual appearance, I'll come down here and hit okay and hit okay one more time. Looking here on our graph, we can now see that we just added our 50 period moving average. And if I look up here at the top, since this is a one day chart, this is actually the 50 day simple moving average. And now that we actually have the study on the chart, let's actually go over the ways we could actually use this to find potential buy or sell indications. And there's actually two methods we're going to cover in today's video. The first of these methods is by finding a recent price crossover above or below that SMA line. When the actual price of the underlying crosses above the SMA line, it's a potential buy signal. Whereas when the price crosses below the SMA line, it's a sell signal. So looking here at this AMD chart right now, I'm sure we could find a few examples of this. If I look over here towards the right hand side, we can see a time period where the price of the stock crossed above that 50 period SMA. So that area right there would be our potential buy signal. Now, if I were to scroll a little bit further to the right, we can then see that the price of the underlying actually kind of bounced off that 50 period SMA. So it was kind of acting as a level of support right there. But looking a little bit further to the right, we can actually see when the price crossed below that line, crossed below the 50 period SMA, and that would be our sell signal. But I think you guys get the idea. The very first method is pretty straightforward. It's when the price of the underlying crosses above or below that SMA line. Now, moving on to the second strategy, we actually need to apply a second moving average line to our chart. So we're gonna come up here to the studies menu, go ahead and select that. From there, we're gonna come over to the search box, go ahead and type in simple again for simple moving average. Go ahead and select it and hit add selected down here. What I'm gonna do next is come over here to the settings menu and actually change this from the nine period SMA to the 200 period SMA. I'm then gonna come down and change the overall appearance to a gold line and make it a little bit wider so it's easier to see. So now that I've added that, you can actually see that 50 period SMA still is a blue line, but now right below that, we actually have the 200 period SMA as well. 
So you can see here we have a longer term SMA and a shorter term SMA. When the shorter term SMA crosses above or below that longer term SMA line, that's going to act as our potential buy or sell signal. The most popular of these being the 50 day versus 200 day simple moving average, which is why I just added those in today's video. These crossovers actually have a name, which you'll probably hear quite often in the future, known as the golden cross or the death cross. So if we were to continue using AMD as an example, if I were to scroll back in time, looking right here, it looks like around uh, July 28th, we can see a time period where the 50 day SMA crossed above the 200 period SMA. So right there, if I were to highlight that, that would be our buy signal, and this would be known as a golden cross. If we were to come further to the right or more towards the current time period, I'm sure we can find right here is a death cross where the 50 period SMA crossed below the 200 period SMA. So right there would be our sell signal. Now it's important to mention that like all indicators, the SMA lines are not perfect. However, they may be able to give us some insight as to the overall trend in the stock and make us aware of some potential trend reversals. So even though they're not perfect, they can be incredibly helpful to us. But hopefully you guys all feel a little bit better and understand how we can actually use the SMA to find potential buy and sell signals. And let's next go over how we would create a custom scan to actually find those crossovers within Thinkorswim. In order to do that, what we'll do is come up here to the scan tab, go ahead and select that, and then specifically make sure we have the stock hacker selected. I'll also mention that we'll be creating two separate scans in today's video. The very first one is going to be to find stocks that have had a recent price crossover above their 50 day moving average. The second example, which we'll cover a little bit later on, is going to be to find those stocks where the 50 day SMA has recently crossed above the 200 day SMA, also known as the golden cross. So both of these would be potential buy signals or signals that we may want to go long the underlying stock. Starting with that first example, looking for a price crossover above the 50 day SMA, what I'm going to do is come over here to the add a filter box on the far right hand side, go ahead and select that. I'm then going to come down and select the study filter. You can then see over here on the left hand side that ADX automatically populates over here. We'll go ahead and click on that one. Down below we can then see a drop down menu with all of the pre-made study filters available to us. But in our case we're going to come down and select a custom filter. You'll then notice a pop up window comes up. I'll go ahead and drag it down to make it actually possible for you guys to see here. Looking there you can still see that we have the ADX crossover inside of there. So the very first thing we need to do is go ahead and delete that out of there. We'll then come down to the lower left hand corner and select add a condition. This page will then allow us to actually create our custom scan. And remember, we're looking for the price of the underlying stock crossing above the 50 day SMA in the past day. So what I'm going to do is come up here to select a condition. It's actually going to be a pricing condition. We're going to be basing this off the closing value. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm then going to say crosses above because we're looking for a bull signal. I'll then select a condition. It's going to be a study condition. Remember, I'm looking for it crossing above the 50 day SMA. So we'll type in simple here. Select simple moving average down below. The only thing I need to change over here on the right hand side is change this from the nine day SMA to the 50 day SMA. I'm then going to scroll down to the very bottom of this list and just make sure it's got one bar selected down here. That's simply saying that this crossover had to happen within the last one day. If you were okay looking for companies where it's happened in the past two days, you'd put two there. In the last five days, you'd put five there. But in my case, I'm happy with one. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save down here. Looking up here in the top left hand corner, you can also see I've got the aggregation period selected as a daily aggregation. So it is using the 50 day SMA. Then finally, we can actually see the think script that's created. Everything looks good. So I'm going to come down here and hit OK down below. So now that I'm happy with that, we can actually see up here, we actually have the study filter created. And if I were to come over and hit scan, it's only going to show me companies where the actual stock price has crossed above the 50 day SMA today. Now looking in this list down here, we can see there are 447 results. That's way too many to look through. I can also see over here on the left hand side that a lot of these guys don't really even trade. A lot of them don't have any liquidity. So to quickly narrow down this list, I'm going to come back up here to my basic stock filters and let me just add a couple up here. I'm just going to go through this quickly and you guys can see what I add. Minimum stock price of 10 bucks a share right here. I'm going to go ahead and put a million as the minimum share quantity so far today. So I'll go ahead and type in a million here. Hopefully that's enough zeros. And then finally, the very last thing I'm going to add is for market cap in millions. There are obviously a lot of other filters that you guys could add, but these are the ones I'm just adding to uh, narrow this down in a really basic way. All right. So now that I'm happy with that, let's go ahead and hit scan one more time. All right. So looking in the results now, we can see there are only 11 companies that actually match all of our criteria right now. And let's actually double check that. So we can see here the very first one being PBD. 
If I were to come up here to the charts page, let's go ahead and throw in PDD up there. And if we were to come down to my chart right now, again, what we're looking for is the actual price of the underlying crossing above the 50 day SMA today. So looking right here, we can see that that did happen today. So it does meet our search criteria. If we wanted to take a look at another one real quick, looking at my results here, I can see JD also match my criteria. Let's go back up to the charts. Let's go ahead and throw in JD up there. And looking over here at the current time period, we can once again see that that crossover did happen today. So now that we're confident on how to create a price crossover, let's next look for a golden cross, the 50 day moving average crossing above the 200 day moving average in the past day. So what we're gonna do is come back up here to the scan tab. I'm actually gonna come down and simply delete out this filter and we're just gonna start over. Looking up here at the top, we'll go ahead and add another filter. It's gonna be a study filter. You can then see the ADX crossover pops up once again. We'll go ahead and select that and then come down to custom once again. We'll then go ahead and find this pop-up window just like before. We'll go ahead and delete the default that uh, pops up there. We're then gonna go through a very similar process. Go ahead and add a condition. We're gonna select a condition. It's gonna be a study condition. We'll then come up here and find the simple moving average just like before. Go ahead and find it and select it. I then need to specify that I'm looking for the 50 day SMA crossing above the 200. So this one's gonna be the 50 crossing above. And then we'll just go through the process once again here. The only thing left is to change this from the nine period SMA to the 200 period, and then go ahead and hit save and hit okay down below. You can then see the new think script up here at the top. Everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit scan one more time. Looking down below, you can actually see there is only one underlying that matches my criteria right now. And in this case, it is waste management. If we were to come back up here to the charts page and actually throw in waste management up there, Looking over here towards the right hand side, we can see that there was a 50 day SMA crossover above the 200 day. So a golden cross right here. But hopefully you guys see how useful these scans can be rather than wasting your time all day just waiting for something to have a crossover. You can create a scan to only show you those underlines that meet your criteria right now. And also it's important to mention that if you guys create a scan that you really like, if you want to save it, you simply come back up here to the scan tab Come over here to the three little lines in the upper right hand corner and then select save scan query. We then just need to give it a name that we can remember. In my case, I'll just name this SMA crossover. Go ahead and hit save here. And now in the future, if I ever need to access this scan, I can always come back up here to the three little lines and actually load the scan query. So right here we can see SMA crossover right here towards the bottom. Now, besides that, you also have the ability to open up your custom scans as a watch list. So if I came over here to my side panel, came down here and hit the plus sign and added an additional watch list to this side panel. Right up here, you actually have the ability to access your scans. So right up here under my personal watch list, I can see the SMA crossover that I made. Go ahead and select it. Looking down below, you can actually see that waste management currently populates as a result in this watch list. And this watch list is gonna be constantly updating. Anytime a new company meets your criteria, it'll automatically populate in this list. Anytime the stock no longer meets your criteria, it'll fall off this list. So it's incredibly helpful. You don't even have to keep the scan tab open. You can just have a watch list open on your side panel. But that covers just about everything you guys could possibly need to know to get started using the Simple Moving Average. Now, if you guys do have any additional questions for me or recommendations for other studies you guys would like me to discuss, please leave them down below. But that wraps up everything I wanted to cover on the SMA. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next one.